let us talk about power distribution in reactive circuits. Last time, we discussed the reactive properties of inductors and capacitors when subjected to sinusoidal AC. In such cases, voltages across and currents through different components may be at some phase angle relative to the supply voltage and current. These phase angles may produce some non-intuitive effects on the characteristics of the circuit. Consider this circuit, for instance, the combined opposition to current flow due to the resistor and the inductor is known as impedance. Keep in mind that inductive reactance causes alternating current to lag behind the supply voltage by 90 degrees while resistance offers no phase shift. So, the combined effect of the two components, namely the impedance, causes the current to lag the supply voltage by some angle between 0 and 90 degrees. The magnitude of this angle depends on the relative magnitudes of the inductive reactance and the resistance. Generally, the impedance of any reactive circuit can be calculated using vector addition or complex numbers. More on this in a later video. The impedance is the overall opposition to current flow within the reactive circuit. From here, the alternating current flowing can be calculated using this formula. From our RL circuit, by using Ohm's law, we can calculate the voltages across the resistor and inductor. Because current in the circuit lags behind the source voltage, the calculated voltages are also phase shifted relative to the supply voltage. This means that the sum of the voltage values that you obtain will likely exceed the supply voltage. This seems like a violation of the conservation of energy, but the anomaly can be explained easily. Due to the phase shifts of these voltages, it means that their values do not peak simultaneously as the source voltage alternates. So, by considering the phase angles, the peak voltages across the components will add up to the peak supply voltage. In other circuits such as series RLC circuit, the voltages across the components may exceed the supply voltage. This happens because at certain points in time, the inductor is storing energy, while the capacitor is releasing its stored energy and vice versa. So while one component is energizing, the other may be acting as a secondary source, allowing voltages across the components to exceed the supply voltage. Reactive circuits consume electrical power in two ways. Real power is the electrical power dissipated as heat by the resistance in a circuit, while reactive power is the electrical power absorbed within the circuit as the capacitors and inductors energize. Reactive power is not lost, but is released back into the circuit at a later point in time, while real power is lost as heat. So, reactive power is measured in volt amps and not watts. This is simply meant to show that the power is not permanently lost. Apparent power is the total electrical power absorbed by a reactive circuit. It is a combination of both the real and reactive powers. Apparent power is also measured in volt amps because it indicates more than just the power lost as heat. Again, when adding real power and reactive power to obtain the apparent power, make sure to consider the phase shifts as well, otherwise you obtain a sum that is greater than the actual apparent power. These power values can be represented as vectors to account for phase shifts. Reactive power and real power are always at 90 degrees to each other, and the apparent power is the vector sum of these two. This forms what is known as a power triangle. Lastly, a quantity called power factor is used to analyze the amount of power that actually gets used up to the total power absorbed by the circuit. So, it's defined as the ratio of real power to apparent power of the reactive circuit and has no units. Its value ranges between zero and one. When power factor is zero, the power absorbed is purely reactive. And when power factor is one, the power absorbed is purely resistive or real. Power factor is usually represented along with the phase shift. This is because some devices, such as DC to AC power inverters, may easily be able to handle loads having a large net reactance of one sign, but only a small reactance of the opposite sign. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.